Welcome back to This Day Live, the Sunday talk show here on the Arise News Channel. With me in the studio, I have Professor Bola Akintenewa, Director General, Bolitak Center for International Diplomacy and Strategic Studies. Professor Anthony Killer, Professor of Strategy and Development and Director at the Center for International Advance and Professional Studies. Yemi Adamalekun, Executive Director in Office in Office, and Chike Ogea, former Commissioner for Information, Data State, and Managing Director at Mark Foley Limited. Less than three weeks after the convoy of President Muhammad Buhari was attacked in the Northern Katsina State, terrorists have threatened to abduct the president. In a new propaganda video, the assailants who had abducted more than 60 passengers from a Kaduna State-bound train threatened to kill President Buhari and the governor of Kaduna State, Nasir Erufai. The terrorists have also threatened to destabilize the country, kill the rest of the passengers in their custody, and sell out others. The video also showed the terrorists torturing the abductees in their custody. Meanwhile, the presidency has again reassured the public, saying that President Buhari has done all that he could possibly do and even more than what is expected of him to combat terrorism. In a statement issued by the Senior Special Assistant to the President, Garuba Sheo, the presidency says the country's security forces are not clueless or helpless. The statement says that the security forces have their plans and ways of doing things which will not be shown in the media. However, they also add that security forces have refrained from attacking the terrorists who abducted the train passengers in order to protect the abductees. And the government appears to have taken the first step towards protection of lives and property around Abuja by ordering all schools in the territory to close before due time. Already, the Federal Ministry of Education had ordered the immediate closure of one of its unity colleges, the Federal Government College, Kuali, on the uh, fringes of the uh, city that is in the uh, suburb. But right now, I have as our guest, our special guest, first guest in today's edition, Senator Magnus Abe. Senator Magnus Abe uh, representing Rivers, uh, you know, um, Satis, right? I hope I got that right. And uh, he's here to talk about the security situations situation in the country, and also his own uh, ambition. Before we talk about security, Senator Abe, before we talk about the decision you just made, uh, going to another political party, let me say it's good to have you on this live, the Sunday talk show, but also to challenge you. You kept me waiting for about five minutes, and I was uh, really disturbed about that, because time is time. Okay, but let's forget that. What happened? You have just spotted, as they say, from uh, the All Progressives uh, Congress to the Social Democratic uh, Party. Why did you just lose faith in uh, the APC? Is it because you couldn't make it as a candidate of the APC, and this is all about your personal ambition to be governor? Well, first of all, uh, Ruben, let me apologize for keeping you waiting for five minutes or thereabouts. I'm really quite sorry about that. It was totally unintentional and uh, due to circumstances beyond my control. Having said that, Ruben, let me use this opportunity to say that um, the issue of democracy the issue of the future of our people, the issue of the future of River State and the progress and prosperity of our state is beyond any one person. If it was just uh, about Senator Abe, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't attract any attention. The reason why it is um, attracting attention is because everybody realizes that this is more than Senator Abe. So yes, I do have the ambition, I do have the intention of offering myself 
for service to the people of River State. But I've always said, and I want to repeat, that ultimately the decision as to who leads the state and what happens to the state belongs to Rivers people. So it can't be about one person. Secondly, let me use this opportunity to thank the Social Democratic Party, the national chairman of the party, the members of the party, particularly in River State, and the delegates of the SDP, who in their wisdom was able to see value in me and, um, and understand that there is something that we have to offer, that we can offer, and willingly and voluntarily and happily offered me their platform, their friendship, their love to join a, a progressive family that is actually determined to make a difference in the lives of the people. I am very, very grateful to those delegates. They were all members of the SDP and um, they saw value in me and decided to give me the privilege and opportunity to join their family as a leader in that family and I'm grateful to them. Having said that, uh, Ruben, let me also say that um, the, the, the security situation in this country has gone beyond the issue of uh, statements and uh, public statements by the presidency and all that. There is real fear in this land as of today. In fact, uh, a friend of mine was just talking to me as I was coming here. That, uh, the daughter refused to go to church this morning. When they forced her into the vehicle to go to church and they got on the streets, she was literally screaming in the car. They had to go back because she was terrified. I mean, that is the kind of situation, the kind of impression, the kind of uh, uh, impression that people are getting about this country as far as security is concerned. So to continue to issue statements and all that, I don't think that is the kind of response that uh, Nigerians are looking for at this time. They want to see practical actions that will bring relief to, to them in their homes and um, in their schools and in, the, in, their, in their places of work. They want to see practical actions. And I think that unless there are practical steps taken to relieve the anxiety of the citizens, we, we certainly must admit that we have a problem in the country as at this time, as far as security is concerned. Okay, now you have moved from uh, the All Progressive Congress to the SDP. How would that uh, help your ambition, considering the fact that uh, the SDP, the Social Democratic Party, is not really strong on the ground in River State? So, how much time do you have to build up the party? Uh, uh, and you also have the additional challenge well, of uh, a placeholder, uh, precious uh, 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 Morris. There's a gentleman called uh, Morris, uh, who is, uh, you know, uh, now being defined as the placeholder of the SDP. So, are you going to pay him for him to step aside? How much is he asking for? And are you planning to build up the SDP <laughs> to be relevant <laughs> in a matter of months? First of all, Ruben, Honorable Morris Pronen, as everybody who is familiar with River State politics knows, uh, was my representative in the House of Representatives. He's been a close personal friend and ally of mine for years. Um, we're not just uh, friends, we're practically brothers. And he has already um, stepped down, so to speak. And uh, you seem not to be correct because it appears that you're not aware that the substitution primaries has been held. And that as I'm speaking today, I'm the gubernatorial candidate of the Social Democratic Party in River State. And let me also say that the SDP is now the fastest growing political party in River State as far as this country is concerned and is growing in leaps and bounds. As we are talking now, the party is already bigger than uh, some of the, what you consider to be the old established parties. It is, it, is, it is on its way to being the largest political party in River State, as far as River's politics is concerned. And that will be achieved in the next uh, uh, few weeks, so to speak. So the SDP is already well rooted in, in the state. And, um, the way, the way and manner that people are flocking in droves to the party, the, 
the level of uh, happiness and uh, jubilation that was across the state yesterday shows that Rivers people actually had, have space for, for new ideas and um, a new vehicle that can carry them to their destination. And it appears that they have identified the Social Democratic Party and um, the, the, the White Stallion as the, the vehicle as the, the vehicle of choice for their journey to, to greatness. That's, that's, that's the reality on the ground as we speak. Yeah, but uh, I'm asking you what is uh, from um, Morris. What is he asking for? For him to uh, just uh, revert to the position of a placeholder. How much are you paying him? No, Mo Morris Prone, like I said, has already stepped down. He has already submitted his papers to the party and to INEC, and he has already stepped down, and the primaries have been held, and I have been duly elected as a candidate of the Social Democratic Party. He did not ask for anything. In fact, he actually even gave me money to, to, be, to, be, to be clear to you and to everybody and to be fair to him. And I want to use this opportunity to thank him for the money that he gave me. So he didn't ask for any money. People believe in what they're doing, and they're doing it because they think it is good for them, it is good for their families, it is good for River State, and it is good for the growth of democracy in this country. He didn't ask for any money. On the contrary, he actually gave me money. Okay, fine. How much did he give you? <laughs> Ruben, I don't know why you're interested in my finances this way. If you want to contribute to the campaign of the Social Democratic Party, we will send you our campaign uh, fund account, no. <laughs> and we expect a very generous uh, contribution no, no, from you. know you. I'm a journalist. Journalists don't donate money. We don't do that. Okay, but let me they ask do. you. <laughs> uh, okay, maybe you tell me yes, who sir. those journalists are. If they are going about giving money to politicians, then they are certainly not journalists. But in any case, uh, a guy called Chris Finebone, I think that's his name, says that... Uh, you know, this is, uh, uh, you are a wiki, some some wiki, uh, the embattled uh, governor of River State, uh, working together uh, to sabotage the All Progressives Congress. Is there a wiki factor in this matter, as alleged by uh, Chris Feinborn? You know, Ruben, those are members of the All Progressives Congress. I'm not a member of the All Progressives Congress, and I cannot speak for their party. What I know is that if you're a political party and you want to win elections, you must build strength enough to overcome whatever obstacles other people throw at you. As I'm sitting here today, the People's Democratic Party has taken the SDP to court to try to stop them from fielding candidates. And the, we, we, the SDP and the people that were sued, they brought Femi Falana to the court. We're fighting the case and we know we will win. That's how you win elections, by overcoming obstacles, by planning carefully, by having a strategy that overwhelms your opponent, no matter who they are. So uh, Chris Feinborn belongs to a, a party, to a group that has never been able to overcome anybody and has absolutely no hope or capacity to be able to overcome whatever challenges anybody will throw at them in order to achieve victory. So I don't respond to such people. There is a contest on there's going to be an election in River State. When we finish, I will read the results from uh, Chris Feinborn's uh, polling unit on national television so that uh, people will know how well the APC was able to do in his polling unit. I think uh, in politics, that's, we talk with the figures. So let's just be patient. These elections will hold um, in February and uh, in March, the governorship election will hold. And whatever anxiety Chris Feinborn has, he should express it in his polling unit. But I want to stay here and tell you that his word will be won by the PDP. His polling unit will be won by the PDP. That's reality. There is nothing, he, he has no capacity to do anything about that except to make statements, bland statements on, on national television. But it? the SDP will win my local government and it will win several other local governments and it will win the governorship election in River State. That's the reality on the ground. Okay, Senator, what are your chances? You've just said you will win some, uh, Feinborn will win some, and all of that. Is it that you're not confident? No, I said Feinborn, quote, quote, quote me correctly. I said PDP will win Opobo Nkoro 
local government why are you aid promoting because that's PDP? where their candidate comes from. Why are you promoting I, PDP? I'm not promoting PDP. I'm just, I'm just giving you the reality of what will happen in the politics of River State. Chris Feinborn is from Upubo. He will not win his ward in Upubo. That's the reality. I will win my local government and SDP will win the governorship election in River State next year. You can write it down. That's reality. Okay, well, my job is to monitor what happens, not to uh, hold on to any assurance. But I will, I I will read the results for you on national television. That's a promise. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll probably... I will read the results from his word on national television. No problem. But I know that before now, you were promoting the APC presidential candidate, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Chinobu. And you've been on this platform, uh, Arise News, promoting Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Chinobu. Okay, have you changed your mind now? Are you going to be in the uh, SDP and still be promoting the presidential candidate of another political party? Or you have abandoned Tinubu? Um, um, Ruben, you know, first of all, that I'm now the candidate of a political party, and so I cannot campaign on national television. But I want to say publicly what I've always said, that Asiwaju Ahmed Bola Tinubu is not just my friend, he's a mentor, he's a father, and um, he's a respected political figure in this country. So as a candidate of the SDP, I will not discuss uh, the politics of uh, another party on national television, but please rest assured that Asiwaju Ahmed Bola Tinubu remains my friend, I'm a member of his family, and that remains that way. Politics should not be a reason for us to become enemies to those that we have been close to. I don't want to play that kind of politics, and I'm not playing that kind of politics. But I am the candidate of the Social Democratic Party for the governorship of River State, and I respect that. <clears throat> okay, Senator, let's uh, clarify this. You have one leg in the SDP. You have another leg in the APC. Uh, how is that from the perspective of ideas, ideology, commitment? You know, one leg in, one leg out. You are an Ashua Juman in the APC. No, no, no. That's what you have just said. I'm, I'm, I'm clarifying it for you as a man who, uh, you know, Ruben, training. Is, is, is Ashua your condition. friend? <laughs> no, no excuse, excuse me, Ruben. Is Ashua your friend? No, I'm not a politician. I sit I'm here. You. I'm a journalist. Sit no, here. You, are, you don't have to be a politician to have friends. Yeah, no, no, no. Let's let's. Is Asuaju your friend? Yes or no? He's not my enemy. I don't have friends. I don't have enemies. Uh -huh. So this are you a member job. of the APC? He's, because he's no friend are you a you. member of the? Let, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ruben, yes. politicians are also human beings. We have friends. And I am not a member of the APC. I am categorical about that. I am a member of the SDP. Okay. But you know that I've been a member, I was a member of the APC for several years. And I have people there that have become my friends and they are part and parcel of my, my family and myself. So that I'm no longer a member of the APC does not wipe away all the relationships that I've built across this country in my life. I have friends who are members of the PDP. That does not make me a member of the PDP. So we need to separate our politics from our relationships. I am a member of the SDP. That's settled. Okay. I'm okay. not a you are, member you are, you are of the APC. Sure. That's are, also settled. Okay, Senator. I, I am 100% sure. sure. I am not a member of the APC. So you may not be sure, <laughs> but I know that I'm not a member of the APC. Okay, quickly, <laughs> let me ask you. Let's go from yes. local to national. Do you think it's possible to impeach Thank you. or remove from office, as Section 143 of the 1999 Constitution says, President Buhari from office, or as the uh, terrorists have threatened to abduct him? Well, I think that um, the, the, the truth of the matter is that the security situation in this country is very serious, and it calls for very, very serious and um, immediate and robust action. And I think that there is a clear challenge to the president, both in his personal capacity and in his official capacity. These people have threatened to carry, to, to carry the president. That's not a small thing. And I expected by now that we should be doing everything possible 
to see that whoever made that video, whoever had the audacity to make such a comment, is apprehended and brought before the law. So we can no longer continue to treat this challenge with kid gloves. And the, for me, the responsibility of deciding what to do within the government is in the hands of those that are in the government. But I think that the situation is clearly very serious and um, it goes beyond issuing statements and press statements and all that. Something needs to be done and it needs to be done urgently and it needs to be done right now. There are no excuses for the kind of situation in which we find ourselves. We have budgeted money, we have bought equipment, we have every capacity as a nation to be able to secure this country and give our citizens the freedom and the latitude to go about their business without fear. And if we fail to do that, then the government is failing in its primary responsibility, which is the provision of law and order. So I don't think this is something that we should discuss uh, casually. I think it is a very serious situation, and I think that serious and immediate uh, situations need to be treated that way. Press statements will not solve this problem. Something needs to be done, and something needs to be done urgently. Okay, let me rephrase the question. Should the president be removed from office, and is it possible? Are your former colleagues pull it through? My answer, to that, my answer to that question remains what I have said. I have said that the security threat to this nation has gone beyond normal, and it is of a very immediate and potent nature. And so, listen, uh, Ruben, if we are in a country and a prison like Kujé prison, I've been to Kujé prison severally, there's only one road into the prison and one road out. If terrorists can go into Kujé prison, spend time there, release other terrorists and take them out, and we have not been able to find them or do something about it, that is a very serious situation. And people, we need to identify those who are responsible for these lapses, and they need to be taken uh, the action needs to be taken against them, not only to prevent the reoccurrence of this kind of thing, but to also punish those who allowed it to happen. And the ultimate responsibility for the security of this nation lies on the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. There's no running away from that reality. And to, I don't want to join in the talk about impeachment or no impeachment, but what I want to say clearly is that the situation is serious, and the government needs to do something to reassure the citizens of this country that it has a capacity to secure this nation. That's not uh, something that uh, we can trivialize or politicize. I don't want to, everything should not be turned into politics. You know, we are talking about our lives here. You okay. know? So right. we should be clear in what we are saying and how we are saying it. This is a serious situation. Something needs to be done and it needs to be done right now. Okay, finally, I mean, you moved from the PDP to APC and now SDP. Some of your critics will accuse you of uh, well, opportunism. You are just looking for where you can make good for yourself. But okay, let's look, leave that because it may look like uh, you know, a personal thing. But do you, what do you think of this Buhari I will, administration? I will respond to that, Ruben. Yeah, but I, what I do you think, think of this Buhari administration? Um, do you think this administration uh, Ruben, has I think failed? I should respond to that. Okay, even, please even go though ahead. You, even though you said it may look like a personal thing, but you have put it out there in the public. Let me say very clearly that very few politicians have shown the kind of patience and commitment that I have shown to any political platform to which I subject myself. And it is clear to everybody who has followed the politics of River State that there is no space for me and people who believe in the ideals that I believe in to be able to exercise our fundamental rights and freedoms within the All Progressive Congress in River State as constituted. So you don't have to be a slave except you choose to be one. And political parties exist precisely for that reason that people can join them or leave them as the case may be. And the Electoral Act was amended by the legislature to make sure that Nigerians have different options and that people are not shut out of the political process. So all we have done is to take advantage of the laws of our country to present our ideas, our hopes, our aspirations for the future of our society 
before the people of River State. And we have no apologies to make to anybody for the decisions that we take in the interest of our common beliefs and our common visions. So uh, people are free to have any interpretation they like as to what we have done, but we are also free to do what we have done. And so that is the part we have chosen. The ultimate responsibility to decide on what we have done lies with the voters in River State. And everything we have gone through is to give them that opportunity to make that decision for the world to see. And so at this point, I think everybody should just be patient and wait for the voters in River State to decide on these issues. Well, the other question, do you think that the Buhari administration has done well? Will you give the administration a pass mark or will you give the administration F9? Uh, Ruben, I cannot say in all good conscience that the Buhari administration has been able to fulfill its promises to the Nigerian people. They have done some things well, like every other government, but in certain key areas, they have also lagged behind. For example, we are talking about the issue of security. That was one of the major reasons why Nigerians invested their votes and their trust in President Buhari. In that regard, you and I know, and anybody who wants to be truthful knows that the administration has not met up to the expectations of Nigerians as far as security is concerned. You also look at the economy and the rate at which the Naira is practically collapsing is a source for concern. But there are international factors that contribute to some of the economic challenges. But what I think Nigerians would like to see is a clear assurance that the government is in steady hands and that these issues are being handled in a manner that will be beneficial to all of us. That's what I think is important right now. I'm not a school headmaster or a school teacher to start uh, awarding grades, but as a citizen, I believe that it is important that we draw the attention of the government to areas of rising concern among the citizens of this country. And I've mentioned two critical areas the area of um, security and um, the value of the Naira that is blowing inflation out of uh, proportion. And uh, there are a lot of other uh, things, but there are also things that uh, the president has done well. Let's not trash everything and make it look political. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Senator Magnus Abe, for joining us today on This Alive, this Sunday talk show.